Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful July morning. The last Sunday in July. Can't believe it is. It's all going to be August next tomorrow already. Okay. So um, a lot of different announcements, but uh, first I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Okay. So I I want to uh, I have to apologize to those <clears throat> that are watching this service on online. In my uh, exuberance in uh, sharing the message, when I move away from the pulpit, I forget that I don't have a microphone. <laughs> and so folks that were watching didn't hear the end of my sermon at all last week because I was out here on the chair. So I want to apologize to you. And, you know, it's okay. You know, we're, we're friends here. If I do that, folks uh, say, remember the microphone. <laughs> You've got to help me. I get so engaged in the moment. Do you understand where I am? So we can help each other for those that are watching on, online. So I got some comments from family and friends. They couldn't hear the, the end of my message last Sunday. Okay, the uh, Alzheimer's Walk is uh, September 13th in Rice Lake, and I do have a sign-up sheet. If you're interested, interested in participating, we can have a group. And if we do that, we're going to make it a lot of fun. So if you are interested in walking on Saturday, September 13th, uh, put your name down with your phone number, and we'll kind of pull a group together. So, um, so when you leave the sanctuary this morning, there's a lot of sign-up sheets, information out there, and one is a display regarding donations that are needed for Lutheran World Relief. So the Sunday, August 14th, we're having this brunch. And the ladies don't want to charge for that, but they thought this is a great opportunity for donations to support uh, school kids. All right, so there's a table there, and you can look at it on uh, how to figure out what you would like to donate and help our uh, Welka women know what's coming in. So um, look at that table, and uh, that'll be... And then another thing is that for the men, you know you don't like to go shopping, right? Right, men? Right. <laughs> so it's okay if you want to bring some, um, some cash to give to the women, and they will do the shopping to buy school stuff. All right? So isn't that great? Women love to shop, so <laughs> we can help them do that. Anyway, uh, so anyway, we're planning ahead. Uh, for the 14th, it's going to be a super Sunday and um, wonderful food and an opportunity to do mission work to help poor kids uh, wherever they may be. Okay, um, the Sunday... Sunday Children's Sermon was posted on Facebook, and what, we, what I want you to do is share that with your kids and share that with your grandchildren. That's a great way to have a three, four minute message to, to uh, look at that instead of doing it here in church. So the number of hits that we've been getting is far more than we ever would expect kids to be coming to the children's uh, children's sermon here in front of the church. So you can do that, all right? Um, please sign up for volunteering in August and September for serving coffee on Sunday morning. So here's something else. We have new cabinets that were installed in our church office this week. So as you're heading out at the end of the service for coffee, go on through the offices and you can see uh, the brand new, uh, the new cabinets that we have there. So, and the reason we, the council decided we needed new cabinets is because after we separated from Dallas Lutheran Church, we had now more paper, more files, more things, and we didn't have anything to, where to put them. So we had quite a mess, and now we have an opportunity to organize it the way we, we want to do it. So anyway, look at the new cabinets, and uh, Tom Ebler Jr. did a fine job of putting it all together. Let's uh, give him a hand for his <laughs> 
And you had help with, from who? Rick Broughton also helped, okay. <laughs> so different things are getting done as, uh, as we're moving forward. We thank you for that. There's also a sign-up sheet for, want to set up, an, I'm interested in setting up a new book club for this congregation. And the first meeting would be in September. If you are interested in a book club, put your name and your phone number on it and we will decide as a group what book to read and then come together for discussing. Now, why, why do this? Well, last week, Michelle was talking about Alzheimer's Walk, and we need, we need to help each other forego getting Alzheimer's, and one of the ways to do that is stimulation, mental stimulation, so this is actually a therapeutic opportunity. Reading a book, discussing it with one another, interacting, and um, helping our mind grow instead of debilitate. So, a therapeutic opportunity, and you can, you can be a part of that. We uh, will decide when we would meet. We'll meet once a month, find a book, and read it. So, anyway, think about it, put your name down on there. All right. Judy Olson will have surgery on Wednesday, and we want to pray for her. So her name is not in the bulletin. We'll get it in next week, but uh, be sure and pray for Judy as well during our prayers this morning. All right, I, got, I had a lot of different people giving me announcements. Anybody else have any other announcements this morning? Someone is watching online, and what do you want to say? <laughs> yes, Tom? Okay, so we get so we get the information of when the, when the f arrangements are being made and stuff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's begin our service after all these announcements. Please stand as you're able for the invocation and the confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When we meet with those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. And now hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. So in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. We sing our opening hymn.
you to Chris Broughton, our pianist today. Let us pray. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 2, verses 12 through 14, chapter 2, verses 18 through 23. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. I, the teacher, when king of Israel over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven, it is unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see all is vanity and a chasing after the wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and whom knows whether they will be wise or foolish, Yet they will be the master of all for which I have toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This is also vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it all. This is also vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain and their work is a vexation. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. Here ends the reading. Please read responsively with me. Psalm 49, verses 1 through 12. Hear this, all you peoples. Give ear, all who will dwell in the world. You of high degree and real, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, and set forth my riddle upon the harp. Why should I be afraid in evil days when the wickedness of those at my heels surrounds me? The wickedness of those who put their trust in their own prowess and boast of their great riches? One can never redeem another, another or give to God the ransom of another's life. For the ransom of a life is so great that there would never be enough to pay it. In order to live forever and ever and never see the grave. For we see that the wisdom also, like the dull and the stupid, they perish and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Their graves shall be their homes forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation, though they had named lands after themselves. Even though honored, they could not live forever. They are like the beasts that perish. The second reading comes from Colossians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. So, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil, desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of those, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. 
These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self and its practices and clothed yourselves in a new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel of the Lord according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who sent me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, those will they be. So it will be with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord the Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. If you uh, were listening to Michelle, all these verses, these readings, all kind of blend together into a common theme. And so I've entitled uh, my message today, Are We Ready? You never know when the moment's going to become when our soul is going to be called forth. So are we ready? What is our approach to the things we have and the things that belong to God? Let us pray. Dear Lord, you are such a wonderful God. It only bears in mind that we have to have an open heart for your teaching and your guiding and your directing, because sometimes our, our minds get swayed in different directions, and we do things that we're not supposed to do according to your eternal well-being. And so bless us this morning, O oh Lord, with this teaching about greed, with understanding and putting in place the, the wealth and the belongings that we have, and all those things that we are storing up for eternal life. Help us to blend them into a clear understanding. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to begin by simply asking, are you ready? If the Lord came tonight, are you ready? If you had a car accident, a stroke or a heart attack or an incident that took our life, are we ready? We never know what's going to happen. There's the old motto, um, we prepare for the worst, don't we? Plan for the best, but prepare for the worst. 
and so are we ready? In the end, all of us must consider this ultimate question, and I know we don't like to deal with it. We like to just live our life and not worry about what's going to happen to us. But the question really is, where is our values in life? Is it on the things that we have, or is it on the treasures that we have with God in heaven? And so we reflect on the parable, reflect on this uh, word from Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanities, reflect on that psalm. The psalm really is succinct in describing what we're going to talk about today. So there's an old story about a wealthy man who died and he went to heaven. And so um, he was met by an angel who took him on a tour when he was up in heaven. And he came upon this magnificent home, and he said, oh, my goodness, who lives there? And the angel answered, well, on earth, uh, that was your gardener. And he really got excited. Oh, my gardener is living in a place like this. I can't wait to see what I'm going to live in. And they walked a little bit further on, and there was another magnificent abode in heaven. And the rich man asked, well, who lives there? And uh, the angel said, well, uh, she was a missionary while she was on earth. So the, mis the uh, rich man was really getting excited, and they finally got to a place where there was a little shack, and he said, well, who lives there? And the angel said, well, my friend, that's where you live. I'm sorry. We did all we could with what you sent us. Where do we put value on life and putting value in life in heaven? And I'm telling you that this is an ongoing struggle for every one of us. This is not just for the rich, but it includes the poor and those that are struggling. Where do we put value in our life? Put value on things or value on the treasures that God offers us for eternal living. We, we have that struggle. There's a tension that we constantly face as we live out our life, and we probably ask, well, should I have this? Do I deserve that? Well, I'm going to get it anyway. But then the tension, am I hanging on to that? Is that more important than what God offers? Especially these last 10 years, you probably noticed, just like I've noticed, that there's been a lot of building going on in our county. There has been a vast number of businesses and also sheds that are going up. Everywhere I look, in my neighborhood, there are more sheds that were built, not just sheds, but massive sheds, barns almost, <laughs> compared to houses. I don't think there's any new houses built, but everywhere I look, there's been sheds built. So since uh, we've lived here in the last uh, number of years, we've seen this development, haven't we? And what does that indicate? That people are accumulating more and more things. And when you accumulate more and more things, you need a place to put them. And so what happens is that you buy land and you put up a shed. And so countless things are going into those sheds. It also reminds us that uh, there's a lot of adult toys now. Boy, there is advertising, and uh, there are many adult toys that we need to store all these things. So uh, wealth and riches are plentiful, and to this, Jesus addresses our conflict. Okay? Are we ready when our soul is called from us? In the background of our gospel story today, there's an incident that occurs in Galilee as Jesus was teaching a large crowd. Now, Jesus is considered a rabbi. He's kind of a go-to person to uh, deal with conflicts. He doesn't want to be a lawyer, but people come to him. And in this particular case, a man probably a younger son, is uh, 
upset because of the inheritance that he's going to receive when his dad dies. He realizes his brother, according to Jewish law, is going to get two-thirds of the inheritance, and he is going to get only one-third of the inheritance. And he kind of comes to Jesus, and he says, can you talk to my brother? Can you help him deal more forthrightly with this? And uh, Jesus refuses, and instead begins to offer some life and shares with him the larger implications of his question. The preoccupation with things in life. So rather than taking sides as a lawyer, he says, beware of greed, beware of covetousness, for life does not consist of the things possessed. The sum total of a person's life is more than their financial portfolio. And then this is illustrated by this story of a man of prosperity who uh, is very successful in the commodities market and has extra grain, and so he decides he's going to build larger barns to hold all the grain. And his solution was to tear down what he had and build larger buildings to store all of his grain. And then he's figuring in his mind that um, once he has all this, he can sit back and relax and, um, and truly enjoy life. And then Jesus says to him, Sir, this very night your life is being demanded of you. The man did nothing wrong except he put all of his value on possessions rather than on the value of God's kingdom. He was a fool. Lots of possessions, but an empty heart. And it doesn't go into detail, but Jesus is saying this man probably not had, did not have love. He didn't have concern for his neighbor. He did not uh, help out when time was in need. And actually, if we go back <clears throat> the past Sundays, you know, we have the story of the Good Samaritan. We have the, uh, the story of helping out on various occasions. This particular story in the parable, this man did not have a concern for that, only for himself. Me, myself, and I, and my possessions. And then he dies, and what does he have? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Everything that he had, somebody else is going to inherit. So, are we ready? Are we wealthy in God's eyes, not just in our own eyes? St. Jerome, writing in 400 A.D., mentioned in a letter from a woman who preferred to store her money in the stomachs of the needy than in her purse. Mother Teresa has become a living example of caring for the poor in Calcutta during her life as a Catholic nun. I may have told this story before, I don't know, but <clears throat> we had a couple in um, Center City, Minnesota, and Wally, Wally was on our board for our um, primary life points senior center. But uh, Wally and Irene, they had a business. They did very well. <clears throat> they um, they went on, on, they initiated delivering uh, fuel oil to all the neighboring communities back way back in in the 30s. So they. They established a business, they were wealthy, did well, but you know, Wally and Irene not only contributed time, they belonged to, to um, Chisago Lakes Lutheran Church, but they contributed so much to the nursing home facility that I worked at. They generously gave to establish a brand new chapel for the seniors. And after it was built, they gathered one day and they looked and they said well it looks like a building with a steep lawn but it needs a cross and they donated the cross 
And every time there was a need, they were at the forefront of giving to the Lord's work to those seniors. A beautiful couple. A beautiful couple. And what an example they made for me. They saw God's future. And they invested in God's future. And they loved doing it. They were so joyous about what they did. The parable of the rich fool assumed his personal security depended upon his wealth, his possessions, and his self-determination. I have a contrasting story. In the movie Shenandoah by James Stewart, he plays a Virginia farmer during the Civil War years. He begins every meal with the same prayer. Quote, Lord, I planted the seeds. I plowed the ground. I gathered the harvest. If I hadn't uh, put the food on the table, it wouldn't be here. But thank you anyway. We need to consider whether we are thinking too highly of ourselves and our needs and our belongings. In the parable, the unexpected happens when God summons the soul of the rich fool. And all of a sudden, all of his philosophies, all of his ideologies, his trivial pursuits are not when he dies and his soul is called to give account before God in heaven. And someday this is going to happen according to our understanding of the scriptures and the teaching that we will give an account for our life where we put our investment in ourselves or in the kingdom of God. Now, I have noticed in this generation, not only through the advertisements on television and on radio, but comments that I see, and I see the uh, activity, all the fun going on in our uh, resort community of Shatek. The compelling phrase that I hear, eat, drink, and be merry. Eat, drink, and be merry. Another phrase, work hard and play hard. That's what I hear. God calls us to something contrary to selfish pursuits. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And now here's this comment. A fool is never going to grasp that. A fool is never going to grasp that teaching. They will live foolishly and they will die foolishly because they don't grasp this teaching that we know about. So wherever we are in our struggle, the question goes back to the first question, are we ready? We never know when our soul is going to be called. And in that moment, God will discern our spiritual wealth and where we put our true treasure. The clock is relentless. I made the comment, my goodness, it's August already. I had a birthday. Where did the years go by? The clock is relentless. Regardless of what we do or fail to do, the clock keeps ticking. It is a fool that says, heaven can wait. Because we never know, do we, when our time will be called forth. Do we value God or do we value our possessions? Only you, only we ourselves can answer that question. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing Be Thou My Vision. <clears throat>
invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the intercessory prayers. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for the building up of your church. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. O God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and its inhabitants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and for the healing of nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress, especially Gary, Lonnie, Ray, Lila, and Judy. Renew us at your table of mercy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church councils and committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, you are resurrection. We give you thanks for all your saints. Inspire us by their example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in love towards you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Once again, I take the opportunity to thank you for your gifts and your offerings for the mission and the ministry of this congregation and this place. Thank you. Our offering prayer. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand for our Lord's Prayer, benediction, and the closing hymn. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen.